Okay, I'm going down to the house now. Herb Bergen of Winnipegosis, Manitoba, runs Sea Bergen Service, an ag parts and repair shop owned by his parents, Corny and Kathy Bergen. This used to be a Massey Ferguson dealership, which influenced Herb's decision to start collecting Massey toys as a hobby. But then he decided to go one step further and build a remote-controlled scaled-down farm, an idea which came to him during a visit to a model train store. So I walked over and I noticed this uh, gear-reduced motor there. And I just thought, hey, yeah, that would work nice in a tractor. So I uh, bought it and came home and massacred the tractor, put the motor in there and just slowly kept building from there. I got it working and it worked really nice. And then I thought, well, maybe I can put it on a track. And I figured, well, I gotta have the tractor doing something. And I figured, well, we'll try pulling a wagon with it. The wagon pulled real nice. So then I decided, well, the wagon's gotta have something in it. And of course, grain came to mind. So the grain leg came next and the bins and it just kind of kept going from there. Bergen believed that for a model grain farm to be realistic, he needed a combine in action. He modified this Massey Ferguson 760 to operate on 12 volt electric motors for the transmission, the header, and the unloading auger. The combine itself was a lengthy restoration project. Okay, when I got it, it was a sandbox uh, unit. The cab was destroyed. There was no front end. The whole header and table were all missing. The auger was missing and the back axle, the wheels were all smashed off. So basically I took it and I uh, started off by fixing the cab up. Once I had the cab fixed, I uh, repaired the back axle. It was a solid axle, so I turned it into a, a steerable axle. And then I built the whole header for it, header and table and the Melro pickup. Put all the gears in and drive belts and chains to make it work. For the field itself, he started with a sheet of plywood. Soil from the garden is glued on top, and ordinary roadside weeds were used for the windrows. A lot of work was involved in making the stubble rows. And I made lines to represent the rows in the field. And basically I took uh, sisal twine, cut it in about two inches, two inch lengths, put it on popsicle sticks, two popsicle sticks, held the sticks together, with two clamps and then ran with some hot glue, put the popsicle sticks over top and pushed down on the straw or on the twine and uh, just kept working across till I came right across. Bergen uses canary seed because it seems to be the right size to fit in well on his scaled down farm. He utilized a bit of visual deception to make it look like the combine is unloading the grain into the grain wagon. So what I did was actually make it so it comes close enough to the grain bins and I have a chute coming out of a grain bin that's hidden in the spruce trees and it actually unloads out of the grain bin into the hopper. From the field, the tractor brings the grain wagon to the handling system in the yard. For making the track the implements drive on, Bergen started with a sheet of quarter inch plywood. And I screwed it down to uh, another piece of plywood underneath, 5 16 and then I took a router and I routered out the whole track system. Once I had it routered, then I took the top sheet off and I put some uh, stainless wire, lay flat wire inside. I glued it inside the track and it's basically the same as what race cars use, the little toy race cars. And I just run 12 volts through them and that's what powers the, uh, all the machinery that drives on the track. He unloads the canary seed out of the grain wagon directly into the pit. From there, he controls where the grain ends up, much like on a real grain lake. There's a digital readout down on my uh, little shop here, and uh, I can digitally control it. It'll switch the uh, distributor to go to either one of the bins or to the grain dryer or dump it into a wagon if it's going off to the elevator. The power for the operation comes from a transformer under the table. Herb runs all the equipment with a single remote control. It's uh, actually for little model trains, and they use them quite extensively there. And I thought, well, if they work for that, they might work for this. So I bought the unit, and I came home, and I studied up on it. And I put the uh, receivers into each one of the tractors and into the combine. 
and under the table for the grain leg and I can control everything just with this little unit here. Finding the right material to effectively elevate the grain into the 32 inch high grain leg took a fair bit of trial and error. And I used chains to chains and paddles to bring the grain up on the first one. Well that didn't work very good because the grain would always jam on the sprockets. So the second one I thought maybe buckets would work better. I used buckets, that didn't work either. And so the third one I actually used a piece of belt and made a belt with uh, buckets going all the way around. And that really works good. It's never given me a minute's trouble and it just works perfectly. And the belting I used, I wanted something very flexible, so I used a uh, canvas from uh, a swather and just cut out strips. Bergen built a distribution system that transfers the grain from the leg into the clear plastic tubing connected to the bins. I started off with a dust cap, filled in the bottom, and then I just put a, a bearing up high, and I have a piece of copper elbow with a little copper tube that picks up the grain and distributes it here. Uh, there's a belt that runs down to a motor, and that switches it to whichever uh, grain bin that I desire. For added flexibility, he has each bin connected to an auger that runs back to the grain leg under the table. And I can take grain out of any one of the bins and feed it back to the grain leg and put it into a different bin or send it off to the uh, elevator, whichever way I want to go with it. At the time of our visit, Bergen was in the process of building a Massey Ferguson four-wheel drive tractor. He says it'll be either a 1505 or 1805 model, at this point, he's not quite sure which one.